Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Secretary, you have represented our country with tremendous strength and poise. You've won us friends, but you've always spoken out forcefully where required. I want to thank you because this is maybe the last time you come before us as secretary here. I want to thank you for your advocacy in behalf of women around the globe. You will be uh, sorely missed, but I for one hope uh, not for too long. As you have said, you are heartbroken by those losses in Benghazi. We saw it in your face many times, today as well. You were heartbroken personally and professionally. But rather than pointing to others for their deficiencies, you stepped up and you convened uh, an accountability review board to look into this attack in detail. And you asked them to tell it the way they saw it. And I want to give you my take on that board. I want to go to something Senator Corker said, which I agreed with. The first report we got from the intelligence community about a week or so after uh, was very confusing. It was not helpful to us. All of us, I think, felt that way. But I want to speak for myself. The difference between that meeting and the meeting we had with those co-chairs, which was also a classified briefing, couldn't have been dif more different. They were so impressive. They were thorough. They were strong. They did call it the way they saw it, the way you wanted them to do. And I am grateful that you have unequivocally committed to ensuring that their recommendations are implemented to the full ex fullest extent. And this brings me to a question. As we all know, the House of Representatives urged uh, and voted for a cut of $300 million for embassy security. Now, maybe it's irrelevant for some here, but I have a message. It does cost money to pay for embassy security, or police on the beat, or military personnel, or police here at the Capitol that protect us, which we're very grateful for and we pay for. It does cost money. So to me, I was not disappointed to hear the co-chairs say Quote, Congress must do its part to meet this challenge and provide necessary resources to the State Department to address security risks and meet mission imperatives. Frankly, I think it's a no-brainer. And the fact that we would even have a problem with it, to me, doesn't make any sense. I hope we can work together to get the resources that we need for security. Which brings me to a question about working more closely with the DOD. Um, and, and here it is. Have you already engaged with DOD to provide additional Marines at U.S. facilities to fulfill the ARB's recommendation that state and DOD work together to provide more capabilities and capacities at higher risk posts? And before you answer that, could you maybe address the issue in Mali right now? When you look at Mali, you see a government that is weak. They don't have the best security. Are we working on that post? Well, Senator, thank you. You've raised a lot of very important uh, issues. I'll try to be as quick as I can in responding to them. Let me start with the budget, because this is a bipartisan issue. Um, since 2007, the Department has consistently requested greater funding for embassy construction and diplomatic security. With the exception of 2010, uh, Congress has consistently enacted less than requested. Most notably, in 2012, the Department received $340 million less than requested, close to 10 percent less than the request. And then over the last two years, cuts to embassy construction, security and maintenance uh, budgets were um, almost 10 percent off uh, as well. Now, the ARB, as you said, has recommended an increase in facilities funding to $2.2 billion per year to restore the construction levels called for in the 1998 ARB report, the only other one that was ever uh, public. And I would, I would go back to something the chairman said, because this was a point made in the ARB. Consistent shortfalls have required the department to prioritize available funding out of security accounts. Um, and I will be the first to say that the prioritization process was at times imperfect. But as the ARB said, the funds provided were inadequate. So we need to work together to overcome that. 
We are asking for funding for more Marine security guards, uh, for uh, refilling the capital account so that we can begin to do the kind of upgrades and construction that's needed. Um, Deputy Secretary Nides briefed House and Senate appropriations and authorizing staff. We've sent letters to the House and Senate leadership uh, to ask for transfer authority language, not new money right now, but transfer authority language. The Senate was good enough to put it into the Senate version of the Sandy Supplemental. It did not get into the House side, so we're still uh, looking for the House to act. Um, with respect to Mali, um, Senator, there was a country that had been making progress on its democracy. Unfortunately, it suffered a military coup um, by low-ranking military officers, which uh, threw it into a, a state of instability. Uh, with the Toregs, who, as you know, uh, some groups of, as well as other groups, had been in the employ of Gaddafi for years. He used them as mercenaries. Uh, with his fall, they came out of Libya, bringing huge amounts of weapons from the enormous stores of weapons that uh, Gaddafi had, that uh, insurgents uh, liberated, as well as uh, uh, others. And they came into northern Mali. At the same time, there was a move by al-Qaeda in the Maghreb to establish a base in northern Mali. Uh, we have been working to try to um, upgrade security around northern Mali among a number of the countries. Algeria is the only one with any real um, ability to do that. Most of these countries don't have the capacity to do that. We are now trying to help put together uh, an African uh, force from ECOWAS so that African soldiers will be in the front of this fight. The Malians asked the French to come in. Obviously, France is one of our, our oldest uh, allies. We are trying to provide support to them. Um, but this is going to be uh, a very serious uh, ongoing threat. Because if you look at the size of northern Mali, if you look at the topography, it's not only desert, it's caves. Sounds reminiscent. Uh, we are in for a struggle, uh, but it is a necessary struggle. We cannot permit northern Mali to become a safe haven. People say to me all the time, well, AQIM hasn't attacked the United States. Well, before 9-11-2001, uh, we hadn't been attacked on our homeland since, I guess, the War of 1812 and, and Pearl Harbor. So you can't say, well, because they haven't done something, they're not going to do it. This is not only a terrorist syndicate, it is a criminal enterprise. So make no mistake about it, we've got to have a better strategy. And I would hope we'd have not only a strategy that understands you know, making it possible for these governments to defend themselves better, for people to understand and agree with us that these terrorists are not in any way representative of their values, but that we can bolster uh, democracy and uh, try to give these Arab revolutions a real chance to succeed. Thank you. Senator Rich. 